and it runs off essentially cow farts and you can develop or build your own AD plant, your anaerobic digestion plant. A big news, buying the puppy as I've said and I've decided uh, what dog breed it's going to be. Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be speaking about how we can make the farm zero carbon by 2031. Well as you can see we've just got Clover up on the logs today who's, jo who's joined us. She's staying on there because earlier on I let her run around you and she went underneath the log pile. Clover! Clovey! So at least we can keep an eye on her up there and she's not going to be going anywhere. So the wood behind me is the farm's stock supply which we were loading up in, in yesterday's video which was the wood chip and in order to make the wood chip we have to collect wood in order to make that chip and it has to be dried. We try to collect and harvest as much byproduct wood, as much waste wood as possible and this wood we all see behind me, a lot of it is, rot is wood which has gone rotten due to disease, wood which was too thin to make the grade for the paper mills and also wood which has to be thinned out in the forests, in the woodlands, to allow other larger trees to expand and to grow. So that's a variation of the different types of wood we're after and it's all being used, it's all being burned in a biomass boiler to produce heat for the farm. And at the end of yesterday's video I asked you guys uh, if you had any ideas of how we could make the farm zero carbon by 2031, what could we do on the farm in order to reduce our emissions, to reduce our impact on the planet? And there were some really great comments. Comment from Sparky Plug. 28. All your environmental ideas are great, uh, but you missed the biggest one. Use less fertiliser. The government are already forcing it on farmers. Well, if we could try to use less fertiliser, that would be a great thing. Unfortunately, due to the current crop prices and due to the way everything's going, we do have to use the standard amount, if you like, in commercial farming of fertiliser. If we don't use any fertiliser, we're not going to have a crop. One thing we, we would like to start using a bit more of is farmyard manure. So when we're doing contracting jobs for other farmers, if we can get some more manure into the onto the farm, one great thing about farmyard manure is it's high in organic matter and that's really good for the soil structure on the farm and it's also high in phosphorus which is slow releasing so if we can get that into, into our soil to improve the soil structure to slow release that phosphorus that would be a very good thing and it, and it would also reduce leaching because when you improve your soil structure it consequently reduces leaching because you've got a better structure which in turn results in less soil runoff and something else I've been looking at uh, which is a really good idea for reducing our carbon footprint is from the manufacturer we were talking about the other day which is New Holland and New Holland I don't know for any of you guys out there who might know this but they've been busy making a, a methane tractor and it runs off essentially cow farts and if you can find a way to harvest your cows farts or, or alternatively you can grow a crop and you can develop or build your own AD plant your anaerobic digestion plant you can then harvest the gas and you can run your tractors your New Holland gas tractors on gas. Now unfortunately other tractor brands at the moment uh, haven't seemed to have gone down that route so it's, it's only something which New Holland seem to be doing at the moment. However the other popular tractor manufacturers such as John Deere and Fence seem to be going down the electric route. I believe Fence seem to be going down a hybrid uh, electric diesel train at the moment. That's a really good way of reducing the fossil fuel usage. Nowadays with modern tractors as a lot of you guys have said with AdBlue we don't really need to watch the emissions that so much anymore because all they emit now out of the tractors is, is essentially water vapor and nitrogen nitrogen which is uh, more or less harmless to the environment. So tractor manufacturers have really done a good job there of reducing emissions out into the environment. The only issue which still lies is the fuel usage because they're still using fossil fuels and that's a big problem. It all comes down to what you're running your equipment on. Which takes me back to the methane powered tractors as an, as an option in the future. It would be really nice once this lockdown's over and once we can get out again to go and try a methane powered tractor. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, a methane powered gas tractor working. So some of the other plans we've got, which some of you guys commented in yesterday's video, uh, was to have some cover crops on the farm. So to drill turnips, mustard seed, millet and oil radish. And I've had a word with Pottinger about a Pottinger drill which we can put on the back of the synchro so that we can drill a cover crop every year to stop the soil erosion and to capture carbon because when that cover crop's growing it's going to suck in carbon from the atmosphere and then when we plough it in we're then storing the carbon in the soils and for those of you guys who don't know that's called carbon sequential when, when you can store the carbon in the ground so by purchasing that drill later on we're going to be significantly reducing our carbon footprint and to get net zero by 2031 we need to be not emitting a lot of carbon we'll always emit carbon that you can't stop that but we need to be emitting a very minimal amount and then the farm's responsibility is to take in as much carbon as possible from the atmosphere from society from everybody else in the world so if the average person in the world if they're driving a car which is being powered by fossil fuels they're living in a house which is electricity 
fossil fuels, gas, water which is coming in which is, uses fossil fuels in the stations. There's too much stuff nowadays on fossil fuels. So as a farmer, as a custodian of the land, our job is to sequester as much carbon as possible and store it here on this, in this farm. And I believe for a lot of farmers in the UK who can adapt and who can change to the modern ways, there's going to be a really good future for them in terms of being able to earn a living off the land and from your farm by going down that route, by capturing carbon and storing it in your farm. And it goes back to my old philosophy of if you put positivity out into the world, it will come back to you in some way, shape or, shape or form. If you, and it's one of those old wives' tales. It's one of those old riddles. It's a law of the universe. It's something which always happens. So if we can still farm, produce crops and meat for society, and then sequest carbon at the same time, I think that would be a really good way of maximising it in what is in today's world uh, considered quite a small farm. And this farm is 500 acres, so it's, it's not a small farm, but on a commercial scale, it is a small farm. You need 2,000 acres, 3,000 acres now to have a combine harvester because they're, you know, 250,000, 300,000 pounds. And everything is just getting so much bigger. And when everything gets bigger, generally the quality of what you're producing will go down. What our philosophy to do here is to have a sustainable farm, which is going to be able to be handed down the generations as a sustainable project, as a sustainable business and as a sustainable farm, which will still be able to make a living to earn an income for future generations. And they can work and live off the land and enjoy the lifestyle, which farming and looking after the environment will give them. And I think for getting up every morning, for coming out here, I think that's a really good sense of purpose to have. I think it's a good goal to have. As I always say to you guys, you know, one of the main reasons why I started this channel was to inspire you guys, to inspire you to do something. And once you've got inspiration, you then need to put that inspiration into action. You need to, you need to have a plan and then a longer term plan and then a goal and then a goal after that and then a goal after that. And what I've just been talking about is the long-term goal on the farm. So it's a big goal and that's going to be something which is going to be very difficult to achieve. But if we achieve it, I think, I think the rewards will speak for themselves. Sometimes it's not necessarily about the materialistic things. It's about leaving a legacy. It's about creating something which is going to last through the generations. Something which you can't go into a shop and buy. I think we live in such a materialistic, consumerist world at the moment and especially in the western world and i think it's nice sometimes just to have a change just to have a bit of spiritual time to think about what is the long-term goal what is the long-term goal with in, with the farm where is farming going in the next 50 years are we even still going to be farming in 100 years maybe we'll be drinking special milkshakes and that will give you all of the nutrients you need who knows uh, but i would like to think some things from the probably now old world uh, will continue in the future. I for one like uh, a roast dinner on the Sunday. I like fish and chips, Chinese, Indian for example. So I don't think those things will be going anywhere anytime soon. But something which does worry me in farming at the moment is just this large mass scale farming. Uh, we're using more pesticides, more fungicides, more herbicides. We spray this, spray this, spray this. I just don't think it's a sustainable solution. Sometimes I think it would perhaps be even a better solution to look down an organic route. But in order to go to go down the organic route now, it's so specialist and it's it's such a it's such a niche market which you have to get into. So if we can still farm in a com in the commercial sense on a commercial scale, but just change and adapt with the times and and really modernise and and if we could be unique and be different, I would just absolutely love that. That's something which again, that's up there with the goal. And I'll write all of the goals down and I'll add them into a future video and we'll talk about this again because I think it's really important to get some perspective sometimes uh, on, on just where you are in life and where, where you're going. I know a lot of you guys out there are quite young and you're around my age or if, if not older and everyone's in a different stage of their life. Everyone's on a different journey, on a different path. I find it really amazing that I've been able to, to inspire some of you guys in your career path and whatever it is you want to do. As I always say, farming is something which is really exciting to get into at the moment. You don't necessarily need a farm, you don't even need tractors or equipment or cows or sheep just yet. Just working for a farmer is enough sometimes, getting a part-time job at the weekends on a farm, visiting shows just in your part-time if you've got a full-time job and just dipping into the industry just to see what it's like. And I'm sure one day in the future when this lockdown lifts, we'll all be able to go out and I'll be able to organise the Ollie's Farm meet and greet, which I tried to organise uh, last year before the lockdown but obviously the, uh, the worst happened but touch wood <laughs> on 250 tons <laughs> um, we'll be able to have an Ollie's Farm meet and greet later on this year if, if Bojo, if Boris uh, sorts everything out and we can come go back to normality otherwise it will be in 2022 and we've also got Llama to look forward to which will be next year Agri Technica which is one of my favourite shows and Somme de la Vage which is a show in France which I absolutely adore that's one of my favourite shows up in the French mountains and I cannot wait to go and visit that. We have uh, wine at lunch and uh, brie and cheese and saucisson and it's just an amazing experience and I'd love to bring you guys along to that. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching today's video. So from Clover and I, before it starts chucking it down, before it starts raining and tomorrow we've got a, a little bit of a treat for you guys. We've got a piece of equipment coming which uh, I've been waiting a long time 
a long, long time to get. And Clover and I, who's getting on a bit now, she's getting a little bit older, uh, big news. Uh, I'm uh, buying the puppy, as I've said, and I've decided uh, what dog breed it's going to be. And I'll let you know the dog breed in tomorrow's video. Thank you very much for watching today's video, and we will catch you on the next one.